Hey everyone, so I've been kind of messing around with Unity to kind of learn more about game development and I wanted to kind of document the things that I've learned and maybe make some tutorials about them. So the first thing I'm going to show in this video is how to kind of create a top-down player who can move around with WASD. So to get started in Unity, there's like a lot that's going on here if you're a beginner and I honestly, I'm, I'm new as well so I'm trying to learn some of this stuff. But what we want to do is basically get a sprite of a player and maybe we can import that into our scene here. So let's just go ahead and go to Google and try to find one. Uh, so this guy looks pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead and grab this and just save it. And what you can actually do is save this image into your scene. So if I go to my workspace, I should be I should be able to find like where this is actually saved or set up. Um, so we have here, we can actually put this in the assets folder and inside of here, we can just say like player. This could be our player image. So going back to Unity, you should see that the player shows up in the bottom assets directory. And you can make more subfolders if you want to kind of organize your code or your assets differently, but we'll just kind of stick to this. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to kind of drag this player onto our scene and probably scale it down a little bit so that we can actually start walking around. So if we were to click play, we should just see this kind of player show up on our, our camera. Okay, so this is the player and we want to kind of add some functionality to this player. So to create logic, right, to create some code, some C-sharp code and attach it to this player, what we can do is right click on this and say create a C-sharp script. And I'll just go ahead and call it player.cs. CS stands for C-sharp. And I will hit enter. And what you can actually do is click and drag this script into this right panel over here. So I click on the player and I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this player script to kind of attach this logic onto this player object inside the game. So now whatever code that you type into the script is going to be applied to this object. So when you first create that script, it's going to kind of scaffold out a basic file that has a start and an update method. So I went ahead and copied some code that already kind of works into this player object. And we are going to kind of explain what's going on here. So this is a C sharp class, which is going to define some update logic for this player when it's loaded into the game. Um, we also have some members up here. So this is just some like variables that we're keeping track of the know how fast the player should move. And then we also have a rigid body class object that we are going to use to know where the player's location is. And we're going to come back to this in one second to kind of hook that into our player object. But the main takeaway is we have this fixed update method. And I think the main difference between update and fixed update is if the user is experiencing some low FPS, then this update function is going to be called at a lower rate. So your game might get a little bit choppy if you use this update method versus using the fixed update method. Your player is going to update with the same amount every game tick. So I think this is why we want to use the fixed update method here. So let's kind of take a peek at this fixed update method and try to figure out what's going on here. So first of all, we need to know if the player is trying to move left or right or up or down. So built into Unity, there is an ability to grab the basically if you're trying to go left or right so that we get access raw of horizontal and this is going to return a one or a zero or a negative one based on the direction that the player is trying to move so if i hit a this should probably be negative one if i hit d this will become one and if i'm not pressing any key this will be zero same thing with this vertical method this is going to return negative one one or zero based on if i'm pressing w for up s for down or if i'm pressing nothing it will be zero now, the reason we're putting this into a 3D vector, in fact, I think there's a typo there. The reason we're taking these inputs and putting them into a vector 3 is so that we can actually normalize them. So one thing you'll notice in 2D games is when you hold W and D at the same time, you move faster in a diagonal direction than you do with an up direction or right direction. So we need to basically normalize where the player is supposed to be moving towards. And we want to make sure that the magnitude of where they're trying to move is basically normalized between uh, zero and one. We basically get a normalized direction and then we cast that to a vector three by taking the X and the Z locations of that. And then using the direction, we're going to basically try to move the player with some magnitude. So using the movement speed times by the fixed delta time, that's gonna say move this player in this direction by a, an amount of let's say three F. I can move this to make this higher if I want my player to move faster. And then finally we say take the rigid body object, which we're going to ultimately attach to this player object. And we're going to say move this player to the current position that the player is located 
plus some magnitude, right? So using the direction and the magnitude, we can basically add these vectors together to get a new position and that should move the player in the direction that we want. So there's actually a syntax error here that I have an extra comma. Let me just go ahead and delete that and save. And now going back to the game, we should be able to run this and we should see the player start dropping. All right, so you can see we can slowly drop because of gravity, which we can turn off. But if I hit W, the player is going to go up, S go down, A to the left, D to the right. And now we can actually move around the screen. So to fix the issue with gravity, I'm going to go ahead and click on the player and I'm going to go ahead and go to gravity scale over here on the right. I'm going to change this to zero. So that'll basically not give a gravity to the player and he won't drop over time. So now I can move around the screen and we can actually kind of go to the scene and probably change the the movement speed of the player. I don't know if you can do this live. Let's see if we can. You can. So I changed the movement speed to six and you can see that the player is moving faster. And this movement speed is just a member that's attached to the player class, which we saw here. So you can kind of change the constant default here if you wanted to to something else. But I think five or six is probably a good uh, number. Now, the next thing that we probably want to do is let's find a 2D box. So Sprite 2D box. And that would just give us some reference as to like where we're moving around the page. So let's just go ahead and copy this box. And I'm going to put that inside this assets folder as well. And you'll see it show up here. So I'm going to click and drag that into my game. Let me go ahead and just stop the game. I'm going to drag that onto my scene, scale it down a little bit. And this is just a reference so we know where the player is moving to. All right, so the next step is we want the camera to follow the player a little bit. And this one can be easily achieved by just adding a new script. I'm going to add, go to right click on this right here and say create a C sharp script. I'm going to say follow player. Actually, I'm going to call it follow camera dot CS. And then we can kind of open that up as well and just paste some code in that I have. And I'll explain what this code is doing. So what this is doing is we have a public member here, which we can kind of attached, attach the player to. And we are going to basically on every update, we're going to take the location of the player and we are going to move the camera to that player's location, right? So this dot transform position is the kind of the position of the camera and we're telling it to be positioned over the player. Okay. So now that we have a follow camera script, we can actually attach that to our camera here. So if I click on the main camera and just like we did before, you can click and drag this over to your components list and that will attach the script to your camera. But now you'll notice here the follow transform variable says none we actually want to attach it to our player. So if I go ahead and click on this little plus sign, I can click on the player object. And now when I run the game, the camera should follow my player around. Okay, and right now we don't have any like collision or physics, but you can easily achieve that by adding like a box 2D collider. But that kind of wraps up this video. I just want to show you how to quickly attach um, some movement controls to a player and have the camera follow the player. If you're trying to build a 2D side scroller or top down shooter game, you can achieve it using this code that I kind of showed you. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this in the future and leave a comment if you have a different way that you like to have this logic implemented.